Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. All health on demand, just for you. Dr. Means teacher, if we don't teach you anything, then what are we doing here? <laughs> We're here for you in all original health programming right there. You can watch it on your phone, your device, your smart TV, your computer, whatever. We're here for you each and every day. That's what we do. Let's go to Carl. Hi, Carl. Uh, I have a, a, a problem with my legs. Uh, I am not uh, standing straight. And my gait is off on my legs. Uh, my legs um, uh, have a uh, rheumatoid arthritis and and uh and one leg and it's that they try to uh stretch my muscles on my legs by making me stand up and and, and uh I, I've done this for over a year now and it's not working. Well, I think a couple of things you want to you want to look at. Now, the legs themselves, you talk about circulation, you can talk about nerve flow. There's a lot of things you can you can start looking at. And if they've done testing on it, and really don't know what's going on, but you're feeling that every single day, I would go see one of two practitioners. I would see either a chiropractic physician that can lay things out for you and and look at some testing from a little, little bit different perspective, non-surgical, look at the nerve related issues that might be involved and osteopathic physicians can do a similar type things they're going to look as well with nerve flow but they're going to look at, at vascular flow too all non-surgical now once you figure out exactly where some of this achiness is coming from it could just be something nutritional very common to have a nutritional component to it that that could be that could be there so you want you always want to have that looked at as well so you could have some basic nutritional deficiencies. I mean, there could be something as simple as, a, as vitamin K deficiency that causes achiness in, in the body and in the legs. Could be vitamin E. You don't have enough of that. Blood could be too thick. You can have all, all kinds of issues going on. So it could be too thin, too thick. So I, it, there's a lot of, of, of questions and could be. So I would get the testing done, get some blood testing done, have someone look at it from an, a nutritional perspective that can really give you some good advice and then give me a call and, and let us know, and then we can kind of go from there. That's one of the big keys for sure. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call. Now, if, you have, if you're not a big protein person, I would encourage you to be. One of my favorite protein powders that I use is One World Way. You can check them out at oneworldway.com. Fantastic. And, again, one of those things that, that I've been taking whey proteins my whole life is I work out and exercise. And I'm just a big fan. And I've never found one that I like this much, really. And, and it's, it's something I use. I, t I take three, t three shakes a day. And it's hormone-free, pasture-raised cows, growth hormone-free, antibiotic-free. I've just never had the, the, the benefits that I've seen from this. So check them out, oneworldway.com. Really, really good stuff. All right, so we've got Thomas in Dallas, Texas. He says, are multivitamins as helpful as taking independent supplements like by themselves? I, I really like a multi. I, it's been touted in medicine forever that it's, it's good. I mean, it's probably the one supplement outside of vitamin D now that, that we all physicians agree on, that a multivitamin is a good idea. So multivitamins are great. And I, I really like the, you know, you want a whole food multivitamin. That's very important. And if you've never been able to find a good one, and you can find a great whole food supplement there. But, I mean, it's, it's one of those deals that you've got, even if you eat a great diet that's organic and you feel like you're getting all your fruits and vegetables, there's always filling in the gaps. I mean, there's something that your body's not getting that your body needs to get. So the, vit the multivitamin goes in and it covers over the, the gaps and, the, and it fills it in. So that's what you kind of want to look at when you're, when you're dealing with that. All right. 888 that's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Skimping breakfast. Have you ever heard about that? Right? Mom told you don't skip breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. It is. So what's interesting is now they're saying skipping breakfast can be a recipe for heart disease. So you better be eating not the biscuits and the donuts. <laughs> it's got to be the right kind of breakfast. 
However, men in middle age and beyond who skip breakfast or eat late at night because of greater risk of developing coronary heart disease. New research is out. Male health professionals said who regularly skip breakfast are 27% more likely to die during 16 years of follow-up. That's crazy. According to Leah Cahill, who's uh, at the Harvard School of Public Health in Boston. So they adjusted all these studies for diet, demographics, physical activity, television watching, and amount of sleep. And those who said they ate at night were 55% more likely to die. People who just eat at night, late at night, 55% more likely to die. It's interesting. Both relationships, however, felt shy of statistical significance after further adjustment from the body mass index. This is all in the Journal of American Heart Association. But they said if, if replicated in women and other ethno-cultural groups, the findings from the present study provide evidence to support the recommendation of daily breakfast eating by clinicians and health authorities to prevent coronary heart disease and improve health at both the individual and population levels. So they said there's a lot of things we don't know uh, can do to reduce our coronary heart disease risk. So in a scientific statement recently, the American Heart Association in 2012, researchers outlined effective population approaches to improve these dietary habits. So the bottom line is stay away from all the junk food, high fructose corn syrup and all that, and the high sugar-based foods. But skipping breakfast causes a rise in cortisol on a regular basis, very destructive to the body if it's done over and over and over again. And so breakfast gives the body the nutrients it needs, stabilizes blood sugar, blunts cortisol, and gets the body ready for the day and the nutrients. And then, of course, the eating at night piece is very very interesting to me because I think you have to look at what they ate. Because if if at night you eat two whole eggs before you go to bed, it's not going to cause your death risk. I mean, it's just not. Your body actually does well to stabilize blood sugar through the night. I think it's if you eat a bunch of ice cream. The problem is people eat bags of cookies and ice cream and donuts, and they have all these cravings at night, fried chicken or whatever it is, and then they go to bed on that, and they do that on a regular basis, and then that can wreak havoc on your health. But that would wreak havoc on your health if you did it anyway. So that's all I'm saying. 888 Give us a call. If you haven't checked us out yet, we want to get you in shape. Your mind, your body, your health, your relationships, everybody, we want to see you get in shape, thrive, begin to make it to go to that next level with your health and your life. 888 We're here for you. Coming up, we've got some great questions for your health. I see you waiting on the phones. Plus, I'm going to jump in and get some info for you that you don't want to miss. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book, for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at inchainnetwork.com. Are open triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. This triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Give us a call. We're here for you each and every day. It's all about health, all about you, all about going to the next level with your health and your life. That's what we do here on the show. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, all this nutrition and lifestyle based care we talk about, go to the website. You can find it there. Our team members are growing every single day, and they can touch base with you wherever you are to get the help that you need. That's the key. All right, let's go to the phones. Talk to Mary. Hi, Mary. Uh, I have a small cyst, and um, they would like to take it out as well as ovaries. 
and and so they also want to do a um, colonoscopy at the same time. And I don't really think I want to do either one of them because they took a blood test for cancer. And I understand the number is supposed to be 25. Mine is 26. And I'm not exactly certain what I should do. Hmm. Well, here's the deal. First of all, you got to focus on one of the big keys, which is cutting down inflammation in the body. That's very important. So cutting down inflammation and, and making that happen is always a big key, and you want to focus on that first always. So remember that when you're, when you're cutting down inflammation, it starts with your diet, your eating habits. Now, one of the big things you've got to look at here is to be really supportive to the liver and the kidneys. You've got to focus on, and that's a, a huge piece of it. So doing equal amounts of lean protein sources like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs is your proteins and whey protein. I'm a big, big fan of the proteins, of the protein powders. They're organic. And then also your low glycemic carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables, and then your good healthy fats, your almonds, your walnuts, your cashews, your avocados. All those foods make a big difference. And when you're eating those types of foods, one of the keys you have to focus on, which I think is really important, is also your, your liquids. So the getting enough fluids in every day, half your body weight in ounces of water. Now, cutting out the juices, the sodas, the sugary drinks can play a big role, too. Now, if you're not exercising along with this, then you're doing yourself a big disservice as well. And, and just based on what your physician will let you do, I mean, you always want to ask, kind of get cleared, make sure everything's good. But especially if you have the age of about 45 50 you definitely want to find out probably 50 but that's a, that's a big deal so exercising even 10 minutes a day can help getting your body to a place where you can at least get started on a typical routine will make a big difference so you want to focus on getting that done on a regular basis it makes it makes such a tremendous difference i would focus on that in a great way now other piece too that you want to look at, and, and I find this to be uh, pretty interesting, is to make sure that your sleep patterns are good. And you're like, well, sleep patterns, yeah, it makes a difference in our overall health. And one of the big issues with sleep patterns is not getting enough or waking up a lot during the night and, and not allowing your body to recover. So if you don't get good, solid sleep throughout the night, steady sleep, deep sleep, then your body has a real tough time getting into that stage where the body repairs. Hormones repair, body tissues repair, glands and organs and systems repair. So your body needs deep stage of sleep just to get to that level. And that's one of the areas you really you really want to focus on is getting that body, getting your body to that level. It just takes time. So I encourage you to focus on getting kind of an overall lifestyle plan together. And a lifestyle specialist is always good to help you, but you want to have someone that can kind of take you by the hand and guide you in that process will make a big big difference triple eight two eight three seven two seven two give us a call or go to the website if you haven't checked us out you've got to check it out all health on demand so our original health care and health programming health fitness medical eating all of that and our daily television show that's nationally syndicated and in about 52 million homes you can check that out there on the website watch that and check it out with us each and every day so we can join you and help you and teach you. Doctor means teacher. If I don't do anything like that, then I'm not helping you. So, interesting. You want to check that out. Now, jaw pain has been tied to anxiety. Before I get into that, I want to talk about something, though, real quick. Now, anxiety levels are affected by what we eat. And you may think, well, you just get anxiety when you get stressed out or you get worried or whatever it might be. And that is the case. That does happen. But our diet plays a big role. We found that green tea actually is very supportive to brain health and brain chemistry. And, and of course, green tea's got all kinds of health benefits to it. And we know that. But one of the interesting pieces for me is, is green tea is helpful with anxiety and depression. Now, you can use any type of green tea for the most part. I like matcha green tea. It's one of my favorites. And you can check it out. Go to Matcha Organics dot com check them out they're just a it's a really really good tea 
and it's one of my favorites. It's organic. It's it's the, the quality of it's amazing. Great for mental clarity. It's just a really really good quality. But I would check that out. But when you're dealing with anxiety, if you have TMJ, which is called it's, it's temporal mandibular joint disorder uh, or pain, but it's a condition that affects the jaw. TMJ affects the muscles and joints that connect your lower jaw to the skull. And there was a study done by German researchers included more than about 4,000 patients who underwent medical and oral health examinations. They were looking at TMJ. And they found that the TMJ itself, because of the pain and also how it was linked with the nerves connected into the brain, that it was causing a lot of depression and anxiety. Now, the anxiety, I can understand. The depression was kind of kind of different, but... So from a nutritional perspective, look at green tea. Adding green tea in your diet can be helpful. And then also, usually you can go, a lot of dentists, holistic, holistic dentists will do TMJ work. And then also chiropractic physicians are well-trained to do work with TMJ syndrome and get very good results. Physical therapists can do it too. They've got some de- decent techniques. So you might want to check some of those practitioners out to help you get a good game plan. But get someone on that nutrition Make sure, remember, nutrition is everything. It's a foundation for all that we need with our health. Coming up, more questions about your health? Check us out on the website. And, of course, I've got more questions about your health. See you waiting there when we come back. Did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, Check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. To find out more, visit the show online, inshapenetwork.com. Lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Food is some of our best medicine. I really believe that. And if food either brings health to the body or what? Takes health out of the body. It's the case. It's the way it works. And so one of the keys we want to look at, and I always talk about certain foods and what they do to the body, how they can help the body, how they can support the body. And all of that. So eating the right kind of foods in the right way, the right timing, all can make a big difference. And what I want to talk about is eggplant. Eggplant is a great one. And you think, oh, eggplant. Who eats eggplant? Well, I used to think that. Until I started eating it, noticing some of the health benefits that are that play a big role in it. So one of the keys you have to look at when it comes to eggplant that I like personally is believe enough the taste of it. I really like the taste of eggplant. It tastes great, and there's a lot that, that you can do with it. So there's a lot of research on the anthocyanin and phytonutrients found in eggplant skin. It's called nasunin, and it's a potent antioxidant free radical scavenger that's been shown to protect cell membranes from damage. So it actually comes in and protects your own DNA. And the lipids or the fats that it's kind of like a covering around the cell membranes we're almost are almost entirely composed of lipids and responsible for protecting the cells from these free radicals. Well, they're rich in phenolic compounds, and researchers at the U.S. Agricultural so- Service in Beltsville, Maryland, have found that eggplants are rich sources of these compounds that are great fighters against a lot of disease that we see. So they're really great against, of course, free radicals that can cause cancer and, and, and that sort of deal. So it's interesting to see. But cardiovascular disease health, which is really interesting, a lot of laboratory animals with high cholesterol were given eggplant juice. And their blood cholesterol, the cholesterol in their artery walls, and cholesterol in their aortas, which is the artery that returns blood from the heart back into the circulation, were significantly reduced. Matter of fact, the walls of their blood vessels relaxed, improving the blood flow and these positive effects were likely due to the nasunin, but also ever uh, certain other phytonutrients that they have in there. Now, what's interesting is menstruating women lose a lot of iron every month with their menstrual flow. And eggplant's loaded with iron, so it can go in and help. So the eggplant, of course, not everyone's favorite, but it's got incredible benefits to it. So you want to increase that. Look at adding that maybe into a salad or, or cutting it up and having, having it as a side. And when restaurants, which now you're seeing more restaurants have eggplant. I've seen that more often. 
but they really pack a big punch. They can be very, very supportive to your health. Make sure to eat the skin because the skin is where, as Granny used to say, where all those nutrients are. And it's true. They do contain a lot. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call or go to the website. We're here for you each and every day. And we had an email that came in. So we had an email that came in, Justin from Louisville, Kentucky. He says, what can you do to drop the belly fat? I've been working hard. I'm down to my last 10 pounds and I really need to lose the belly fat. What do you do? Well, what I'm saying with green tea is a great help because what, really only about two products that have had numerous studies over and over again that we know that can really get the belly fat down. One is conjugated linoleic acid. It's a fatty acid. And the other one is green tea. And green tea, again, you can get green tea. First of all, don't drink the green tea so much that are just in the pre-bottles. There's a lot of sugar in them. But the green tea that you get through matcha organics or just an organic type blend, fantastic. That's what you want to do because it's great. It melts the belly fat, all kinds of research behind it. And the conjugated linoleic acid you get in, say, red meat is a good source. So the grass-fed, pasture-fed red meat contains that. It's a fatty acid, so it's a fat, but it actually helps to burn more fat in the body. So you might want to look at that, too, as that can make a big difference in your kind of your regimen as you're trying to trim and, and get the body where it needs to be. So interesting, to say the least. 888-283-7272. That's 888 Lines are open. Give us a call or go to the website. If you haven't seen us, and you will find what's interesting is all kinds of all health-related programming on demand. You can watch it on your phone, your iPhone, your iPad, or your smart TV, whatever. We're here for you each and every day. Let's go to Janice. Hi, Janice. So I had a C5 fracture. I slipped and fell. And ever since then, um, they they found a little area on the back of my neck when they did the surgery, and they said it was multiple myeloma. But I have just kind of been going down ever since then for its pain. I just can't seem to get rid of the pain. I've had uh, radiation treatments, and I'm on all kind of pain medicine that I don't like. I've gained so much weight. I was just calling to see if he would have any kind of natural ideals that that could be helpful for me. Yeah, one thing you want to look at, and I think is is really important on this, and, and falling like that and, and having an injury from a fall can be a challenge, but, you know, one of the keys you got to look at, too, is cutting down the inflammation in the body. And also the nervous system, if it's not working effectively, then the healing process is going to take a lot longer. If the nutrition is not right, say if you don't have enough minerals and you don't have enough vitamin D in the body as well, then the, the healing process is just not going to go as quickly and as well as it needs to. So that's the area you have to look at is getting that built up and getting it supported as much as possible. That's what I would encourage you to do, you know, bar none. That's what's going to work the most. So fish oil is really good. Cod liver oil, one of my favorites. That can help tremendously, and I would look into to getting that supported as much as possible and then building a good game plan around it because with eating low glycemic carbohydrates, your healthy proteins or your lean proteins rather than your healthy fats, that's going to create a good foundation overall. Now, B6, vitamin B6 can be helpful as well as vitamin B5. You can look at that. Now, the other two is your rest. Your rest patterns are going to be important, so you want to make sure you're getting enough rest in, in from the day to day, that's going to help a lot in the healing as well. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Give us a call. Exercise is a hot topic, right? So, do you do cardio a lot? Do you walk for an hour? Do you get in the gym for two hours? Do you go play racquetball? What do you do? Well, with type two diabetes, we've always talked about diet, and that's what we we tend to focus on. It's like, what do you eat? 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 Do you eat? Right? But what about exercise? New research is showing now that short bouts of high-intensity exercise can help reverse early cardiac changes in people with type 2 diabetes. So interestingly enough, the data suggested that type, this type of high-intensity intermittent exercise benefits both the heart and diabetes control. So it's well known that type 2 diabetes can affect the structure and function of the heart long before patients develop symptoms of heart disease. 
but being physically active can help people manage the condition. And researchers said, the University News released recently, study included 23 type 2 diabetes patients aged 45 to 71. 12 men and women were randomly assigned to com- complete 12 weeks of intermittent high-intensity exercise. And what was interesting is the participants' heart structure and function were assessed during the advanced imaging. High-intensity intermittent exercise significantly improved the participants' heart structure. So the bouts of activity were particularly beneficial on the left ventricle. So they were looking at the different aspects of this and what it could do. The data reinforced how important physically active lifestyle is for people with type 2 diabetes. It is. Getting out and exercising, I mean, something is simple. When they talk about high intensity, let me give you some some options of what that means. So it would mean if you went out and you wanted to take a walk, you would jog for about 30 seconds and then back it down to a walk for a minute, then kick it up and jog for 30 seconds, back it down to a walk for a minute. Do that for 15 minutes. Or if you went to a set of stairs and you ran stairs, you may go up really hard and you know walk your way down. Up really hard, walk your way down. Up really hard, walk your way down. Do that for 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Or do it for sets of 10 and then rest for a minute and then go back and do another set of 10. So it's, it's that type of, of pushing yourself that can make a difference. It's that stimulation of the high intensity level in the body is what really begins to melt the fat increase the energy, increase oxygen output in the cells, it makes a tremendous difference. So I would look at a couple of things like that. If you're wanting to, if you have type 2 diabetes or any of the metabolic-related conditions, triglyceride issues, cholesterol issues, fatty liver disease, a lot of these can be helped with a high-intensity exercise, and they can make a, make a really, really big difference if you do that on a regular basis. So I would encourage you to look into that. 888-283-7272. That's 888 Lines are open. Questions about your health, give us a call or go to the website. It's all health-related programming on demand just for you. So your device, your phone, smart TV. We're developing brand-new programs there as well as you can check out our radio show each and every day and our daily syndicated television show to help you Go to that next level with your health and with your life. Now, coming up, I've got some tips you don't want to miss. I've got some challenging things. We're going to talk about cell phones, what they can do to your health. It's a big topic nowadays. And then also I've got some tips with fitness and weight loss you don't want to miss. And brain chemistry. What do you do with your brain? If it's not working, the memory doesn't seem like it used to be. To sharpen it up, are there things nutritionally you can do? Well, there are. And there's some great tips for anti-aging. We'll get into all of that and more when we come back. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. That's Triple Eight Two Eight Three Seven Two Seven Two. Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. All health on demand, just for you. Now, cell phone use is something that we all have in our lives. It's just something that we can't really avoid. It is what it is, and we just use it for communications and really everything. But they say spending too much time on your cell phone can take a toll on your love life. Baylor University researchers surveyed more than 450 American adults 
to define and gauge the impact of they called fubbing, partner phone snubbing. That's when people use or get distracted by cell phones while in a partner's company. I'm la- I'm laughing because you see this all the time. It's like somebody's in mid conversation and they pick up the phone and start texting. I was at a business meeting the other day and and the guy was there and we were several of us and uh, he starts getting on his phone and texting mid conversation in the meeting and he has to tell everybody I'm, I'm just I'm taking notes of the meeting. I'm not texting, right? Because everybody thought the same thing. It was really funny. And this happens all the time. So what happens is they discovered in these studies when someone perceived that their partners fubbed them, it creates conflict and led to lower levels of reported relationship satisfaction. Study co-author and marketing professor James Roberts said in a university news release, the lower levels of relationship satisfaction in turn led to lower levels of life satisfaction, ultimately, and led to depression. I don't know if you're going to get depressed from the fubbing that's going on, just Taking, you know, get, tell them to put the phone down, or whatever. More than 46% of these people in the study had been fubbed by the romantic partner, and they said that it was creating a lot of drama in the relationships. Our findings suggest that more often a couple's time spent together is interrupted by one individual attending his or her cell phone than not. When spending time with one significant other, we encourage individuals to be cognizant of the interactions of cell phones. Put it down. It's not hard to be cognizant. Just put the thing down. And hang out and talk and be relational. We don't want to be relational anymore. We don't even want to talk on the phone anymore. Have you ever noticed that? Like to get someone on the phone now to have a phone call, you have to text them first and ask them, can I call you or is it a good time? Or we just used to call people. We don't even use voicemails anymore. Voicemails are becoming old school. You realize that? It's amazing where technology is going. Amazing. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call. Let's go to the phones and talk to Eve. Hi, Eve. I am dealing with a very severe case of acid reflux, and I need to know what to do. Okay. It's pretty simple. Acid reflux, I'll tell you, one of my favorites is apple cider vinegar because acid reflux typically means the body's not breaking proteins down very well. And that's what happens. And so if the body's not breaking proteins down real well, then what you got to do is you have to jump in and, and make something happen in that regard. And usually it's it's cutting out a lot of the processed foods and and getting rid of those. And then also you want to make sure your body's breaking them down. Now you can use proteolytic enzymes. This is a, a pretty much based out of bromelain. It comes out of pineapple. And you can buy that in a supplement form. Matter of fact, if you go to our website, go to inshapenetwork.com, you can find uh, kind of articles and tips on that. And even the products, there's proteolytic enzymes there. But, yeah, I mean, one of the deals with acid reflux is is you can do kind of a test. This apple cider vinegar I'm talking about, you can do it at home. So if you take apple cider vinegar and it burns really bad, then you already have too much stomach acid going on. All right? And then that way you need to do more of an acid-reducing diet. But if you take the apple cider vinegar, per se, with a meal, and you don't get gas and bloating and you don't get the refluxing, it means that you didn't have enough of the acid and you needed it to break everything down. So that's one of the really cool tips about this that makes a difference. And one of the pieces that you want to look at because, I mean, at the end of the day, one of the keys that, that's really important for it is making sure you can get the body to break everything down. So I would look into that for sure because reflex is something that's pretty simple, actually. I know even you deal with it, you're like, gosh, is driving me crazy i'm taking the purple pills or whatever but yeah i mean it's something that can really easily be taken care of not too tough triple eight two eight three seven two seven two give us a call or go to the website clara you're next with us how can i help i'd like to know what foods would be helpful for osteoporosis other than dairy i cannot have dairy so what other foods would be helpful for osteoporosis well darling that's pretty simple i mean the, the thing is I don't, I'm not a big fan of doing so much dairy for osteoporosis. I'm a bigger fan of doing dark leafy green vegetables. I mean, really, a big glass of spinach is the same as equivalent or even more, has more calcium than a glass of milk. And so you're going to get the calcium that your body needs there more than anything else. So, I mean, just increase your vegetables. Dark leafy greens, your your overall vegetable content, that's going to make a big difference in getting your calcium. But I'll tell you, you also want to go to your physician. Okay, now this is something that's not talked a lot about with osteoporosis, and we found in the research 
that getting enough vitamin D is one of the most important pieces. So getting that vitamin D in on a regular basis is going to make a tremendous difference. You have to get the vitamin D. I mean, vitamin D is the catalyst for all your calcium and your other minerals. So you have to get the vitamin D in to put a dent in it. And that's a huge key for this. So make sure on a regular basis you're getting vitamin D. Go to your doctor. Make sure the number on the blood test is between 60 and 80. And that's one of the ways that you want to hit it. That's the best way to do it. And then, of course, you can check other vitamins and mineral deficiencies or whatever. That can help. But with osteoporosis, don't forget to get the exercise in, okay? So it's not just about calcium. you got to get out and walk every single day at least 30 minutes, well, 15, 20 minutes at least. Get that weight-bearing exercise, all right? Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer engineer, John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on the show. Together, we can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well, where we're diagnosing hope one person at a time. Listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora. For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com. Slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the Asa RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.